Welcome to Kentucky Mountain Kitchen. Today, I picked about 15 jalapenos. I'm gonna make jalapeno poppers. And these came from the garden right behind the house, which I planted these back in February, and it just rained, so we have a ton of jalapenos ready to make jalapeno poppers. I'm gonna try to cut them up, dice them, fry them, and cook them and make jalapeno poppers. It's slicing time. I, Mom put saran wrap over my fingers. I was going to use paper towel, but uh, we're doing saran wrap. I'm going to grab these because I'm using saran wrap because these peppers will burn your fingers real bad. So I'm going to slice the top of it off the stem. I always have like a trash pile to put it on when I'm cutting. And then I'm going to cut it in half. Be careful doing it. Don't slice your fingers off. Using this to uh, keep the seeds in a better area so they're not all over my cutting board. I'm gonna take my knife and just go in on an angle, being careful and try not to slice my finger. Like that. And this is a very sharp knife, so that will not be good. I'm going to probably rinse these out before I'm done. I'm going to go over to the next pepper, next side of the pepper. You probably could leave the seeds if you want to, but I don't like seeds, and so I'm just going to cut them out. And there's two peppers. I'm going to cut the rest and next year I'll, these seeds will probably grow from this pepper this, these seeds will probably grow more, grow more of these peppers so I'm going to set these to the side and chop a big bunch of them I finished cutting up those peppers and uh, I don't think you'd want to watch me continue slicing like 10 more peppers so I'm going to make the these the miracle of editing fingers are on fire right now. I got the jalapenos chopped over here and I'm mixing up the stuff we're gonna mix them in. So I got salt that's I'm gonna add a couple shakes of that probably about uh, half a teaspoon quarter teaspoon this is a whole container of cream cheese so I'm going to add this in it Try to get every last bit from it. And then I'm going to add some cheese. Okay, I got the grater here and I got some cheese. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grate it on here to get grate to move this out of the way. Grate it on the cutting board so it's a little bit easier. See what how much I got. This is about, i uh, say about two cups or a cup and a half of Kobe Jack cheese. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna crumble it up in here. Just add this cheese in here. That one got stuck together. Add all this cheese, just a good amount.
Okay, I got most of this cheese up. I'm not gonna be able, probably not gonna be able to get all of it because it's just like finally nice chunks. That looks like good. So now I'm going to dice these up into a little bit finer. Not gonna be like a puree or just like super, super fine. I'm just gonna chop them up until they're like little chunks. Like this little chunk, like in half. Like this big, just like tiny little chunks of jalapeno. They don't have to be tiny, but they have to be um, smaller. Okay, I have a ton of jalapenos left, but I've already got a ton in here, so I'm going to try to just mix this up, and if I need more, I'll add any. Well, I'll add some more jalapenos, but if I don't need no more, these I'll probably vacuum seal and put in the freezer for whenever we need jalapenos or something. I'm using a fork for this to stir it up so it'll work. I'll try to bust up that cream cheese and mix it all together so it's not all get a bite of cream cheese or cheese or just jalapenos it's all mixed in together and the flavors just blend together you could just make a giant cheese ball like this or jalapeno cheese ball but I'm gonna fry it because I want to know what it tastes like fried so that's about two no about four small medium jalapenos Been about, it's about three regular size jalapenos. These were smaller than normal, so there was going to be more in here. And that looks good. I'm going to roll these up in balls and then work on my batter to fry them. Probably start the fryer, start warming up while I'm rolling. I'm just going to roll right now. This is what I'm going to do. Roll up to something like this, and then roll it in flour or something, and then drop it in the fryer, pull it out before it melts. And well, before this liquefies, it would be bad if this comes out of the frying juice. And I'm gonna roll these up, get the batter going, and get the fryer ready. Okay, I got my flour mixture right here it's just flour and salt and I have the uh, fryer over there heating up so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll these around so they get a good covering about that much put them in this bowl they were in this little green bowl see I'm gonna roll them in not gonna make them too big because we don't I didn't put a lot of oil in there I'm making them about and a little smaller. About that big. Roll them in flour. Fully coating them and putting them in the basket. See, that's what they look like. Now my hands are clean. I got them in here. And then I'm just gonna roll these guys around a little. Shake it. Try to get them around. Try to roll them around in here. Get them as covered as possible. I knew I wouldn't need this much flour, but I put too much flour. Let's see if that's gonna work. Yes, it will. I hear my, all well, that fire over there doing good. 
I'll just dust these off a little bit. And I'm gonna go fry one as a test. I got the fire fryer ready. I got my slotted spoon to get the oil out. And I got a plate to get off any extra grease. I'm gonna find this little, little, little one. Put this in there, see if it, yep, it's ready. You can hear if it sizzles like that, that it's working. Well, that's up to temperature. I'm gonna see how this one turns out, because I might have to freeze them. So if I have to freeze them, I don't wanna get them all in there. Have only, oh, start sparking. Only have, oh, start popping up with a lot of oil. I don't wanna have to have one mess up and then have the rest of them in the frying pan. I probably fry these all one batch, but. Oh, it's starting to turn golden crispy. Golden brown and delicious. I'm trying to keep it in frame so you can see it. That's some hot oil. And that's going to be my jalapeno popper bite. They don't need frozen. I'm going to add more than one this time. Okay, I just finished frying all these. I got the fryer where all the cream cheese was. My pan and some flour but I got all these fried this is just um fried uh, burnt cream cheese and the rest of this is what was left I don't know why he did this it, there's like no batter on them but the rest of these like this is the one I was wanting to try and I'm gonna do a taste test right here. You got that little one. That's really good. I don't normally eat jalapeno poppers, but these are good. Better than I expected. And you can taste the jalapeno in the background, the saltiness. It's just like right there, perfectly even with it. Like the flavors just are smooth and not like super spicy, and your mouth is on fire. You get that heat from the jalapenos, but you don't have all the super spiciness of the can't eat it because it's so spicy. I'm gonna try one that had more than one jalapeno in it. Like this one, that one had a couple jalapenos. This one, you can see the green stuff in it. Mm hmm. It just mellows it out real good. It's not so spicy they can't eat it. And it's not so spicy they can't taste it. It's just like right in the middle. But that's how you can make your own jalapeno popper. Uh, deep fried jalapeno poppers. Hopefully you like this. Don't forget to subscribe, like this. Awesome happens.